Being able to move around your scene in Blender is an incredibly useful skill to have. Here are 11 ways you can do that, starting with the basics, orbiting, panning, and zooming. So in front of us here, we have a game asset and we can orbit around it by holding down the middle mouse button and moving your mouse around. Now you can also use some keyboard shortcuts. If you happen to have a number pad, you can use the four, the six, the eight and the two in order to move around your model. This can be useful if you need to move by a set amount each time to have a look. Now there's one final way. If you don't have a mouse, and I would recommend that you have a three button mouse, what you can do is use the gizmo at the top here. If it's not turned on, you can turn it on with the gizmos button and then you can just click and drag in this circle and you'll be able to orbit around your model. This is incredibly useful if you're on a laptop or you're using a stylus with a graphics tablet. And there are some other controls here as well for zooming and panning, and we'll get to those in a moment. Number two, panning. Now panning is a way of moving left, right, up and down on your model. So we can just hold down shift, and the middle mouse button at the same time. There we go. And then we can move around the scene up and down. This is great if you've got long objects and you just need to move along them. And then of course you can combine that with orbiting your model to position you in your 3D viewport where you need to be. Now, just the same as orbiting around our model, if we hold control whilst pressing number pad four, six, eight, and two, we'll be able to pan around in increments as well. And you can hold those down for a continuous movement. And finally, on the side here, we can use the gizmo with the hand icon in order to pan around our scene. I use these all the time when I'm on my laptop. Now it's time for number three, zooming. So with zooming, we can scroll down to zoom out, scroll up to zoom in, and that's about it. Incredibly useful when you need to focus on details on your model. You can also use the numpad plus and minus to zoom out incrementally. If you don't have a scroll wheel on your mouse, which would be odd these days, but it is possible, you can hold down control whilst holding down that middle mouse button. And then you can move in and out just by moving the mouse up and down. And of course, over on the sidebar here, we can use the magnifying glass there, click and hold to zoom in and out. Again, really useful when you've got a laptop that doesn't have a very sensitive touchpad or you're using a stylus on a tablet. Now, just before we move on to number four, we need to talk about some options. Now you may have noticed when I panned around earlier, so I moved over here and I started orbiting again, it's kind of orbiting an arbitrary point that's kind of in the center of the view. I do not like that. And we can change the behavior of that over in preferences. Now you can get to preferences by either going to edit and preferences using control and comma, or, and I think this is relatively new, if we go down to the lower right, we can open up user preferences from there as well. Now, what we need to do is go down to navigation. So make sure you're on the navigation tab and we want to orbit around selection. I want to make sure that's turned on. Otherwise, we're just orbiting around an arbitrary space and it can be quite difficult to actually orbit our model. Go back to preferences and I'll make sure that orbit around selection is turned on. Whilst we're here and we're talking about zooming, if you're on a Mac, they tend to invert the zoom. So you can actually go and change the zoom direction here if you need to. I'm going to close those down. It will save automatically. And then we should be able to select our model and orbit around any particular object, which is incredibly useful. Now, number four, aligning your views. So on the number pad, we can go and press one, three, and seven. And you can see there it's moving from the front to the right to the top and it will automatically by default go into orthographic mode so we're no longer looking at things with a perspective and this is incredibly useful when you need to gauge objects and their sizes without worrying about the distance between them and essential for lining things up now if you want to have a look at the opposites what you can do is hold down control before pressing those numbers so control and one will go to the back of the model three will go to the left and seven will go to the bottom now, if you did want to toggle between orthographic and perspective mode, you can just press number pad five. And once again, there's an option at the top here, this gizmo that we clicked on to orbit before. You can see it has X, Y, and Z, and the opposite, minus X, minus Y, and minus Z. Just clicking on those will do the same views that we were doing before using the number pad. Super useful. And this is important if you don't have access to a mouse. Number five, the camera view. 
Now, this is incredibly useful when you're starting to set your scene out. You need to see what the camera sees if you want to render it out, because that is ultimately what your rendering will look like. And you can see I can press number pad zero to switch between what the camera can see and what the viewport was previously. You can also move the camera to be the view that you're currently looking at by holding down control, alt and number pad zero. Now you can also get to the camera view under the view menu, including some of the upcoming ones are all available under this view menu. Now, when you've got a much busier scene, what you might want to do is frame absolutely everything in it. Let's just go ahead and add some more things to the scene. And by movie magic, we've now got lots of things in the scene. So you may be working on one thing individually and want to see absolutely everything. And you can use the home key to do that. Frame everything. Number seven, frame selected. So if I only wanted to focus on these three turrets on the side here, I could select all three of them and press the number pad period to focus on just that part of the model. Again, you can get to this under the menu, frame selected. Number eight, local view. This is incredibly useful when you're working on more complex models that are made of multiple parts. So we can actually drill down at the moment. I'm going to select everything of my Gatling gun and press either forward slash or forward slash on the number pad as well. And it will remove everything else from the scene and just focus on that one model. Incredibly useful. And say I wanted to focus on part of the model that was covered up, I could isolate just this center bit here by doing the exact same thing. And you can see that toggles on and off. Number nine, the outliner. Now, a lot of people use the outliner and it's full of cube 001, 002, etc. However, if you name your objects well, what you can do, and I'll come out of local mode for a moment, is we can select everything to do with a collection or an individual object. This is really, really useful when you cannot actually see the object that you want to select. There are definite circumstances with much more complex models that until something moves, you cannot reveal that part. So in this particular case, this is incredibly useful. I can select the exact part that I want, let's say the gap base and then we can use view selected or local view in order to drill down into that individual object so we can see it in situ by just number pad period or we can isolate it completely with a forward slash now i'm going to switch to a scene for the next two because i think it's really impactful with a much larger scene be back in a moment okay so in front of us here we have a city scene and i want to introduce you to flying and walking so number 10 is going to be fly navigation and we can get access to that on your keyboard you want to press the shift and either the grav accent or back tick key and you can find that key next to the one on a windows keyboard or next to the left shift key on a mac and then we can look around our screen as if it was a first person game incredible now we can use w to move forward and if that's moving a little slow for you you can use the scroll wheel to speed up and this will change the default speed or you can press shift for a slight boost and then we can use the other controls as well so w is forward s is back a is to the left, D is to the right, and we can go up and down with Q and E. Now there are loads of controls and you can see it along the bottom here. And I'll also link the controls for this in the description as well. So you can see absolutely all of them. Now, one thing that I love doing on a big scene like this, let's say I wanted to go up the top here, I might want to press space to get to that point very, very quickly so I can look down. Now, one of the other modes is turning gravity on and it essentially becoming a walk mode and let's have a look how that might feel press tab and now i'm down in this corridor let's make this full screen actually and really take in our scene and i'm also going to turn on cycles here so we can have a look at our scene as we walk around it'll take a few moments excellent so in walk mode let's make this full screen grav accent or back tick and then we can start looking around and now I'm going to turn my viewport overlays off as well so it's nice and clean. And then press the tab key and that turns on gravity. All the previous shortcuts work, but this enables you to look around your scene. And actually, if I move forward like this, it kind of looks like one of those new AI generated videos. And this is a great way of moving around your scene. And if you don't want to go back to where you were previously, you can right click and it will reset the view. And that's the same with fly mode or you can press the escape key. So we can do this in camera view as well. Well, in fact, let's do that. Let's select this and then press zero to see what the camera sees. Okay, now that we're in the camera view, we can go shift and back tick and we can move the camera around as well. This is really, really useful for framing and being able to move around your scene incredibly quickly. 
And there we go, depending on how you're counting, that's 11 ways you can move around in Blender. If you know of any others, please do add them to the comments below. And for more quick tips on Blender, why don't you check out this playlist? Go on, clickety-click.